Are you looking for a fully loaded medium SUV with a turbocharged engine and everything from heated seats to a power operator tailgate? Well, there's this, the Ssangyong Corando Ultimate that features loads of upper spec equipment for the price of a mid-spec Toyota RAV4. But surely there's a catch. Sangyong isn't new to the Australian market. They did disappear for a while, but they've returned. One of the reasons why they never quite made traction initially is because their older designs were not really to our tastes. Let's face it, they were pretty butt ugly. But they're back with factory backing and European inspired designs that don't scare dogs and small children. I like the look of the Corando. It's got quite a nice wide rugged stance and some nice chunky features at the front. And the side is a bit busy. You've got this sort of line coming across there, which I don't mind too much. But I do like the sort of rear end treatment where the, you know, bulging rear wheel arch and this nice chunky D pillar. The rear end is quite unremarkable. There are nice LED tail lights. And Sangyong, of course, couldn't resist putting just a bit of bling with this treatment here, which I can't say I'm a fan of, but hey, small things. The Sangyong Corando comes in three spec levels that all come with fixed driveway pricing. These include the Corando EX, priced at $29,990, the well-equipped mid-spec EXL for $32,990, and this ultimate range topper for $37,990. All three are front-wheel drive and are powered by a 1.5-litre turbocharged petrol engine. You can also get this ultimate spec with a 1.6-litre turbo diesel that also has all-wheel drive. The interior is a bit of a mixed bag. It looks good, there are plenty of bright spots and piano black detailing about, but they're all a bit undermined by some hard plastics, especially on the doors, that really rob it of that premium feel. The leather front seats are both power operated, and of course they have the heating and ventilation. I really like the way they feel, the uh, backrest comes right up and supports you well, and there's good side bolstering as well. The seat is a bit high, and the cushion's a bit narrow, so there's not great under the thigh support, but it gives you good vision out the front. That said, the top of the dashboard is soft to touch, and it houses an 8-inch touchscreen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto capability and the attractive 10.25-inch digital gauge cluster. The centre armrest is at a good height and opens to a handy deep storage tub that's complemented by huge door bins and a roomy glove box, as well as a spot to place your phone and plug it into a single USB socket. That's the only one in the entire vehicle. On the plus side, you'll notice a heap of showroom attractions as soon as you're seated, including the stop-start button, sunroof, dual zone air conditioning, paddle shifters, and the heated leather steering wheel. The rear seats are quite spartan compared to the front. There's really not much here. In a car with this trim, you'd expect air vents and USB sockets, but there's none of that. There's just a 12 volt socket there and door bins, and that's about it. An armrest that folds down with cup holders. But at the same time, the seats themselves are really comfortable. There's really good under bum and thigh support. The backrest is nice and raked nicely to relax. And even three adults, it wouldn't be too bad for shorter trips, but three kids would be really comfortable here, and two adults would love it. The Corando has a big 551 litre boot, which is really good for a medium SUV. However, if you opt for a full-size alloy spare wheel, like this car has, the boot floor comes right up and reduces that volume to 407 litres, which is way below average for a car this size. You can still fit objects about 750 long between the power tailgate and the back seats. The boot width is about 1320 millimeters or 1040 millimeters between the wheel arches. The rear seats split 40-60 to fold down quite flat, allowing you to carry items a little over 1.6 meters long. The boot space has four cargo hooks and a handy light on the side. All petrol Corandos have a punchy 1.5 litre turbocharged engine that's coupled with a six-speed automatic gearbox. There's that initial turbo lag at first where you put the foot down and it just feels like it's spooling up. But once you hit about 2,200 RPM, it just really releases and it's actually quite vibrant. It's actually quite enjoyable to drive. And if you do need some extra oomph, there is a sports mode which you can engage which gets you to that rev range sweet spot a bit quicker. That same button that you press also has a winter snow mode which does the opposite. It actually 
starts the car off in second gear so you take off slower and you don't lose traction on slippery surfaces. The ride is quite smooth in this, it's got a multi-link rear suspension which really absorbs the big bumps well, especially speed bumps around town. But it does sort of get a little bit busy on the sort of minor imperfections and that can have an impact on handling, particularly on country roads. This is a bit of a city slicker at heart and the good thing about that is it has a 10.7 metre turning circle which is pretty tight for a car this size and that'll help you get through some of those tight streets and when parking. All in all, it's quite a cheerful driving experience and I can't really say that about all medium SUVs. The official combined fuel economy for this 1.5 litre turbo in the Corando is 7.7 .7 litres per 100 kilometres, which is pretty frugal, but unfortunately in real world conditions, as far as we can tell, that's not really the case. We're averaging about 10.3 litres per 100 kilometres, which is getting on the thirsty side. Because it's a turbocharged engine, you have to use premium unleaded petrol, which costs a little bit more. The good news is, if you can call it that, it has a 47 litre tank, so you're not watching the Bowser tick over too long, and that will give you a 500 kilometre range when full. The safety systems all seem to work quite well. I like the adaptive cruise control. It settles well in the lane. Not only does it detect the lines with cameras, the radar also works with the car in front. So if he's doing the right thing, staying in the centre, you'll stay in the centre as well. One thing I'm not a fan of is the lane departure warning, which just sounds so irritating. So if you sort of do stray over the line, you get that, which is an absolute pain in the bum when you're on a narrow, windy road. The good news is though, there's a button right there and you can turn it off. There was a time when buying a well-equipped car at a budget price came at the expense of quality and performance. But you can't really say that about the Corando Ultimate. It's got a heap of top spec features. Although it does miss out on a few things you'll find in other top spec cars such as sat nav and LED lighting. But it doesn't skimp on the really important stuff such as build quality, powertrains and safety equipment. And on top of all that, it looks pretty good and comes with a seven year warranty for that extra peace of mind. So is there a catch to buying this? Nah. <laughs>